What is up people, my name is Ross, and today I have a quick Photoshop tip for all you creatives out there on how to remove a color cast in Photoshop. So we're gonna take this image that has a red color cast to it and turn it into this awesome piece of photo awesomeness. Yes, that was redundant, but I don't care. Okay, so to get into this, we're gonna start with our original layer. We're gonna hit Command J to duplicate it because let's face it, in Photoshop, we work non-destructively. And once again, this is my tutorial and this is how I work. So after we have our background layer duplicated, I'm gonna go down here and create a new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna create a threshold adjustment layer. The threshold, with threshold, what threshold's gonna do um, for us is going to find all of the the range of the photo everything from our darkest darks down here to the brightest brights up here and all the midtones in between and what i'm going to do is drag it down here until we just start seeing the, some of those blacks creep in and then once i see a nice blob right there i'm going to hit i on my keyboard to bring up the eyedropper and uh, what the eyedropper allows us to do is obviously sample things but also if you hit shift and click it will create this little what I call a marker. I don't know if that's the technical term. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, so I'm going to mark essentially my my black point or my my darkest darks. Then with threshold still uh, active here, I'm going to drag all the way to the right. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to look for my my brightest brights because I want to find that white point right here. I'm going to I'm going to shift click once again with my eyedropper tool, and that's going to mark where those those whites are. So the the black point and the white point are easy. The, the tricky part is the gray tone. So if I turn this off for a second, gray tone or mid tone, it's kind of hard. You could probably eyeball and say, well, there's some gray in the ski here, but for the most part, there's not really a gray tone or a mid tone in this image. Uh, and I would say, ha ha, you fool, you are lying. So I'm gonna turn threshold back on and I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer on top of this with solid color. And all I'm gonna do is put 50% gray in this solid color fill layer uh, and once I have that I'm gonna go into blending modes here and I'm gonna change it to difference and then by hitting command left bracket that's gonna move that fill layer below our threshold layer and I'm gonna turn this off for a second to show you what the solid color is doing essentially so if I turn this off this is our original image untouched and then with this difference 50% uh, gray image or fill layer it's basically making this into a, a nice acid trip <laughs> of a photo. You got all these psychedelic colors, and that's cool in itself, but that's not what we're after today. We're looking for removing the color cast. But all I can say is I don't know how or why this works, but it's the best process that I've found for my workflow. Uh, coupling a 50% gray fill layer set to difference as well as threshold. So once we have that set, we're going to go back into threshold and pull this back all the way to the left. And originally, without thresh, or sorry, without the color fill, this is going to be our, our black point, right? Because we already set that. But with our our 50% gray in here, these now, hypothetically, and it's like I said, it's 90% of the time, these should be the midtones. All the black that's creeping into our image now, all this area should be midtone. And if we turn these off, I mean, that makes sense. The sky is pretty much kind of neutral. But we also know the sky isn't gray, and that's what the the midtone is going to try to do. Is it's going to try to correct it to gray. So that's why we have the third step, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But essentially, I'm going to hit Shift and click again just to set that midpoint, and then we can delete these layers because we no longer need them. We, we found the three points we're looking for. Step two, now we're going to grab a new adjustment layer, and I like to work with curves because it's curvy, and it's not linear. There's nothing. It Basically, there's fall off that happens, um, and it's personal preference. You could also do this with levels. Uh, but I find it works a little bit better with curves. So we're going to grab this top eyedropper here, and that's going to be setting our shadow tint. And if I click on the first dot, or the first marker, that's going to be our black point. And you can see what it's doing over here in the curves. It's individually going in and adjusting these channels, the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel, to basically fix or correct the color cast. And you can already see how much red is being pulled out of that image, because there's there was a heavy red uh, emphasis in this image. After that, we're going to grab the white eyedropper, and you guess it, we're going to set that to our number two spot, which was our white point. And already the, the image has gotten better. You can notice the contrast and the removal of the red, but you can still tell it's a little pink, and that's why we always look for that mid-tone. 
And by clicking the mid-tone eyedropper here and setting that to our third point, we get a pretty decent, what I always call a nice starting point, because right now this still isn't final to me. Everything looks a little heavy in the yellow now. So this is step three, and this is to whatever flavor you want to make your image to be, because once again, it's your image, have fun with it. I'm going to grab a new adjustment layer and I'm going to do select for color just because I want to remove the yellow. So I'm going to first target my yellows and I'm going to pull those back or push blue in. Basically, pushing this way adds yellow, pushing this way takes out yellow or pushes blue in because color theory, color triangle, yellow and blue are opposite on those. So I don't want to overdo it, maybe right about there. And let's see if this uh, cyan a little bit. And I'm going down to my neutrals because I want to target that sky. The sky is a bit gray for me. I'm going to pull out some of the yellow. Now that's kind of too almost purple. Pushing some blue. Now we're getting somewhere. This is looking a lot better just with three quick steps. Maybe play with the magenta not too much. I don't want to brighten it per se. That's not too bad. So that would be the three step process. But because I'm doing this tutorial for you guys tonight, I want to throw in an extra step. And this is what I do with all my images. I'm gonna hit Command, Option, Shift, E. And that's gonna merge a visible layer on top of everything. Because once again, not destructive. I don't wanna get rid of anything in case I wanna go back and tweak per say, or let's say the sky, or maybe his, I, maybe I don't like the color of his red boots. Maybe I wanna tone down those red boots a little bit. Go. I gotta be careful because that's affecting the skin tone again. We'll give him a nice glow. Why not? So that was before. Yeah, I actually like that better. Anyway. So I'm gonna actually get rid of that. All right, Command Option Shift E, merge visible. And with that visible layer, I need that visible layer because I'm gonna apply a camera raw filter. Camera raw is awesome. This is my go-to when I'm finishing a, a, a piece or a photo. And the first thing before I get into this, the blue is blacks that are clipping and these red areas down here are whites that are clipping. And if you don't see those, you can just go up here and toggle those on and off. I like to see them because I wanna make sure that I'm not clipping things. Um, I don't know if I can get rid of the black clipping because I don't wanna flatten the image too much. But essentially, it's it's if you're familiar with Camera Raw, it's Camera Raw and it's just a filter. So you can play with Everything that your RAW files can typically play with on anything, a JPEG, this image, literally anything. It's just a filter in Photoshop that you can play with. All right, so there's my kind of tonal cheeks. I'm gonna go tw tonal tweaks. I'm gonna go into effects. I'm gonna dehaze it just a little bit, which is gonna add a little more contrast and probably not help our black clipping situation. I'm gonna add a little grain, just because that's how I fly. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of a vignette because why not? Vignettes are overused. I think that looks pretty good. This is still part of the third step of basically making this image your own and setting s setting your flavor to it, essentially. I don't know how else to say it. This is our original image. You know, it's got the color cast. This was the original, if you will, uh, correction, you know, that applies our curves adjustment and our selective. And then this last part is just throwing a camera raw on top of it which doesn't seem like it's doing much, but in my book, it just really ties the whole image together. Oops. And there you have it. My three-step process to uh, take this color-casted photo and turn it into what I consider a mini masterpiece. Uh, having said that, if this was for a client or if I was doing this for pay or instead of for a tutorial, I would definitely go in here, oops, and clean up all these areas with the patch tool or clone tool and get rid of this ugly line in here and make it just look awesome. But that's all I have for you tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any ideas or you want to learn something in Photoshop, shoot me a message, email me, uh, leave it in the comments, and I will try to address it. Uh, that's all I have for you. Thank you once again for viewing, and I will see you guys next time.